Good morning. Welcome to the Holy Mass at St. Gregory the Great. My name is Tom Ahern, and I will be your lector for this Mass. Our celebrant will be Father Rob, assisted by Deacon Michael. All gifts and gift cards for the Giving Tree are due to be returned to the vestibule this weekend, with tags attached. Thank you for your support. Volunteers are still needed for the Living Nativity. Please see information on the front of the bulletin. Please read the bulletin for important information on the Advent Penance Service, Christmas Flower Memorials, our Parish Financial Report, the upcoming Glory Beats Concert, and much more. Readings for today's liturgy are located at number 1094 in the Gathering Book, 1094. At this time, I ask you to stand and welcome those around you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. The prophets today tell us to prepare the way of the Lord. My dear friends, let's look deep in our hearts today for those things that still need to be prepared, that need to be cleaned up, that need us to be ready to celebrate this great event. Let's call to mind our sins and let's ask for forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, and what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, 
through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertakings hidden those that set out in haste to meet your Son. But may our learning of this heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to your company, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Comfort. Give comfort to my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her service is at an end. Her guilt is expiated. Indeed, she has received from the hand of the Lord double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the desert, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the wasteland a highway for our God. Every valley shall be filled in. Every mountain and hill shall be made low. The rugged land shall be made a plain. The rough country a broad valley. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. And all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Go up onto a high mountain, Zion, herald of glad tidings. Cry out at the top of your voice, Jerusalem, herald of good news. Fear not to cry out and say to the cities of Judah, Here is your God, here comes the power the Lord God, who rules by His strong arm. Here is His reward with Him, His recompense before Him. Like a shepherd, He feeds His flock. In His arms, He gathers the lambs, carrying them in His bosom and leading the ewes with care. The Word of the Lord.
and his glory will dwell in our land. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. Mercy and faithfulness have met, justice and peace have kissed. Faithfulness shall spring from the earth, and justice look down from heaven. Lord, let us see your kindness, and grant us your salvation. Also, the Lord will bestow his bounty, and our earth shall yield its increase. Righteousness will march before him and guide his steps on the way. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. A reading from the second letter of St. Peter. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years like one day. The Lord does not delay his promise, as some regard delay, but he is patient with you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a mighty roar, and the elements will be dissolved by fire, and the earth and everything done on it will be found out. Since everything is to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you be? conducting yourselves in holiness and devotion, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved in flames and the elements melted by fire. But according to his promise, we await new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you await these things, be eager to be found without spot or blemish before him at peace. The word of the Lord. Sisters, the Lord be with you. 
and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. John the Baptist appeared preaching in the desert of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It was of him that the prophet Isaiah had spoken when he said, A voice of one crying out in the desert, Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his path. John wore clothing made of camel's hair and had a leather belt around his waist. His food was locusts and wild honey. At that time, Jerusalem, all of Judea, and the whole region around the Jordan were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the Jordan River as they acknowledged their sins. When he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce good fruit as evidence of your repentance. And do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I tell you, God can raise up children to Abraham from these stones. Even now the axe lies at the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree that does not bear good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. I am baptizing you with water for repentance. But the one who is coming after me is mightier than I. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winning fan is in his hand. He will clear his threshing floor and gather his wheat into his barn. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, and he will prepare your way. A voice cries out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight his paths. My dear friends, we're already on our second week of Advent. And this messianic prophecy in the first reading from Isaiah is echoed in the voice of John the Baptist. In the Gospel, the Israelites of old were exiled. And so are we in some ways. In our relationship with God, due to our own sins, and rebellion against God. And as a result, there's a desert and even rough places within each of us. We're not perfect yet. Like we celebrated the other day the Immaculate Conception of Mary. We need to be cleansed And we need to be made into those planes that we heard about today. There are deserts that can be void and emptiness in us. There's those rough places that can be any place where there is need and where our Lord Jesus Christ And his words are still not present. It might be in those difficult relationships in our families. Or it could be at work. Or it could be here as we gather to celebrate Eucharist. Or when we gather with our friends. To become the people of God that God wants us to be. We need 
to open our hearts to Jesus and to be transformed and filled with grace. Like the people in today's gospel, they subject themselves to a baptism and they confess their sins. They heard the voice of John the Baptist and we too need to respond to Jesus' call to come to him and to be healed. We have to let that love of Christ enter our deserts of hatred, prejudices in us, and draw on that humility to displace the pride in our lives and once again to live out those life-giving words and to prune that which is stubborn in us. Advent's a time of preparation to direct our minds and our hearts to Christ when we meet him at that second coming at the end of time, but also as we celebrate this anniversary of the Lord's birth on Christmas. Our scriptures tell us not to waste time on predictions. And Advent isn't a time about speculation. Advent readies us to be alert and to be ready and not to be weighed down by the distractions of the cares of the world. This year, Advent's going to be very quick. It's almost half over with today already. Because we lose the whole fourth week. And yet, this is the sacred time. That time of preparing, that time of quieting ourselves and disciplining our hearts so that we could share in the full joy of Christmas. On Monday this week, December 11th, our parish of families will be gathering to celebrate the Sacrament of Reconciliation and to prepare ourselves to enter more fully into this mystery of the Incarnation. That by God entering into our world, He has changed us and calls us to be His disciples, and not disciples of the world. And so at three o'clock, there'll be that opportunity to receive the sacrament at St. Pius, and also that evening here on Monday, tomorrow, at St. Gregory's at 7 p.m. You know, I can't go into my bathroom and cock the mirror and say, Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. Would be nice to do that. I have to go just like you. And I have to humble myself to sit in front of one of my brothers and tell them, I'm not where I should be yet. Please help me to grow in that holiness. Wow. And before I can hear your confession, I probably need to go and be confessed myself. So that those graces of God touch all of our hearts and bring us closer to Him. My dear friends, there's much preparation that still needs to be done before we enter into this Christmas mystery. Our homes, decorations, lights, cards, baking, preparing meals, and gifts that still need to be purchased. But you know what? If you're not prepared, and I'm not prepared, it doesn't matter what the outside says. It matters where our hearts are. 
Our world is troubled. It needs to find peace. My friends, this sacrament avails ourselves to unburden those tensions, those causes of unrest, and to bring us closer to that peace that God promises. It's our time to accept the challenge and to level those mountains of our lives and have them redeemed by God's love in the sacrament of reconciliation. Our world is looking for change. And it begins with each of us. You and I can bring about that change. That gift of reconciliation was given to us when Jesus offered us that most precious gift of all, His life on the cross. And why? So that you and I could come to share in that glory that He created us for at the beginning of time. I know for myself, I need to expect that accept this moment and to receive the sacrament so that all of us could more fully celebrate that great supreme love we're preparing ourselves to see in the Christmas season. So I ask you to take that initiation. Maybe it's 20 years since your last time One of the kids went the day before and I said, wow, you must have done something. But it's time for us to come closer to God. It's God who takes the initiative to draw us and to come closer into our lives. It's our opening of the doors of our hearts to allow Him into our lives. My dear friends, may the Savior's coming into our lives find all of us ready and prepared to be those spotless individuals and to be people of peace. O come, O come, Emmanuel. Come into our lives and touch us with your grace. Let us together profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, And on the third day he rose again from the dead, and he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, and from there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Lord our God, we come as we prepare ourselves for this feast. And we ask you now to hear our prayers. For the renewal of the church, that the Lord may sanctify her during this holy season of Advent. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For nations in crisis, those in war, and those suffering political turmoil or economic recession. May all be able to find peace and happiness in this coming season. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. As John the Baptist preached of Advent repentance, may he cry out again in the desert 
of our secular world, compelling us to make straight the way of the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In thanksgiving for the release of hostages by Hamas, may the Lord watch over them as they return to their families and heal them from all pain suffered both mentally and physically during their confinement. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish communities, may we pray for an end to all wars and mass shootings in our country and world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the attention of this Mass, whom we pray for in a special way, Alice Kroth, and for our own prayers and intentions, which we offer now in prayerful silence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died in faith, May they be granted the rewards and blessings of the kingdom, especially those who have passed on this week from our parish and faith community. Michael Pascarella, Jr., Patricia Waugh, Joseph Anthony DePeters, Robert J. Tronalone, Fred Calandra, Sr. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord our God, you have heard our prayers. Strengthen us to do what needs to be done so we can celebrate with joy this great feast. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our ushers will now take up the collection. The second collection is for the Religious Retirement Appeal. Our gifts will be brought up at this Mass by Jim and Linda Kubis.
pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings. And since we have no merits to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty, our salvation, always, everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the loneliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago. He opened the way to salvation, to eternal life, so that He may once again in glory and majesty make new at last for us, that we may watch for that day and inherit the great promise to which we now dare to hope. And it's now with angels, the archangels, the thrones, the dominions, and all of the hosts and the powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory and without end, we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Domini Deo Sabaho, Clemente, Gloria to all, Hosanna in excelsis. And as You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, that by sending down your Spirit like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time that he was betrayed, And entering willingly into his passion, he took bread, he gave you thanks, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and he said, take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once again, giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples. And he said, take this, all of you, drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant that will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith
Therefore, we celebrate the memorial of His death and His resurrection. We offer You, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that You have held us worthy to be in Your presence and to minister to You. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, that we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters that have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection and all of those that have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all of the saints that have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and that we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. It's at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching that we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. And graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always freed from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those that are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that You should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen.
Let us pray. Resplendent by this food of spiritual nourishment, we have humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through the partaking in this mystery, we may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and to hold firm to the things of heaven through Christ our Lord. Just a review of today's homily. What are we celebrating tomorrow? Oh, I didn't hear that well. What are we celebrating tomorrow? God's love for us, yes. What time at St. Pius? Three o'clock. What time here at St. Greg's? Now, this is the test. In two weeks from right now, you're going to have a choice. And some people are probably trying to figure out the easiest way to get through the fourth Sunday of Advent and Christmas. Yeah, I I feel it. You guys need to go to confession because you're looking for the easy way out. That's how this works. You got to go twice that weekend. It's Saturday and Sunday for that fourth week of Advent. Then, after we finish the noon Mass on Sunday, we switch gears, and the four o'clock Mass is Christmas Eve. So, anybody that's looking for that short way out, Advent penance service. All right? That's how easy it slips into our lives to do the easy way. Let's be faithful to who we are. Great. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let's go in peace. Glorify the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our prayer for renewal for our universal church, our diocesan church, our family of parishes, this parish, and also our domestic church, each one of us in our homes. In every age, O God, you have called us to be your people, to be your church. In this time, we begin a new to discern the pathways that will lead us, your people, closer to you. Continually bless our journey as we proclaim your good news, celebrate your saving presence among us, serve others with charity and justice, and steward the world you have entrusted to our care. Send your spirit to lead and to guide our Emmaus journey as we commit ourselves to the renewal of our church. And this we ask through Christ our Lord. Have a wonderful day.